you guys. I have found the cutest thing to find. I thought it was a real life bug. But look. Oh, look! A tiny ladybug. It's <laughs> so cute. I told you it was cute, didn't I? Yeah. I thought it was going to fly away and I like, poked it and realised no, it's actually made of, I don't know, some sort of stone. <laughs> that is very sweet. Cute. Fly away. What's that? What's the it's rhyme? Fly away, fly away home. Your house is on fire. Your children are burned. Or something like that. It's quite, it's quite, um, it's Morbid. quite dramatic. Yes. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> Cute. Hi everyone, today I am out with my mud buddy Cy Fines and we're also meeting a friend called Ard who actually unfortunately is stuck in traffic at the moment but we are at a super location which is secret. Top secret. Top secret. <laughs> we can't tell you where it is but we really want to take you along with us to see what we're going to find. Ard has assured us that there are treasures to be found on this beach and I can really believe him because there's pottery and glass strewn mm. everywhere and I can hardly wait to get out there and see what we're going to find. What about you? Yeah, Are you excited about this? it's going to be amazing. Yeah, like, like, like Nicola said, can't really reveal the location because it's a bit sensitive for for Ard, so he's kindly asked us to not reveal that unfortunately but we're going to show you everything that comes up and there's going to be some wonderful finds i can feel it in my bones <laughs> <laughs> me too Great. so let's go and get some luck in the muck and let's i hope that poor Ard yeah. is going to get out of the traffic soon because at the moment oh it must be agony imagine when you know that the tide is going to be really really low and yeah. you are stuck in your car in fact that has happened to me before once in london and it was agonizing because the tide and time waits for no, no man. man. Oh, so man. we'd better get going, haven't we? Yeah, let's do it, let's do it. Let's get some luck in the muck. Now behind this rock over here, I've seen what looks like a little label. It definitely has some lettering on it. Just here, look. Let's take a look. Let's see what it is. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Auto Strada Motors Antwerp. That is lovely. And what is this? It's interesting, isn't it? come off of something, maybe there was some wood in there, maybe it's a corner of something. Nice decorative bit of metal. I think I found something Dutch. It's a Delft tile, I don't think it's particularly old, but isn't that beautiful? Ooh. Oh, that is lovely, look at that. Yeah, windmill. Windmills. It's got the best part of it, isn't it? That was Dutch, sadly broken there, Dutch but windmills. yeah. Oh, look. I don't know if it's got a. Mm, Maybe it's a eight. limited edition. Perhaps, but isn't that gorgeous? Yeah, that's beautiful. Hand painted as well, yeah. not a transfer. Here's another piece to add to the decorative metal collection. Got a few interesting bits today. Now I'm not sure what this is, but it looks like it could almost be silver, doesn't it? What could that be? I wonder. I'll have to ask Cy Fines, see if he's got any ideas. Now I've got a little bottle here, and it's got something on it. Let's see what it is. It's in one piece. It's an amber, and... That's 
So I'm going to take it down to the water and give it a little rinse. Here we are. Okay, let's see what it says. Usage external. So for for external use. That's better. Got the contents out now. Look at that beautiful colour in the sun. Now there's some really beautiful glass here, which is great because I'll be able to collect some for my glass fish. And I've just seen this stunning piece of glass. It looks like something industrial, almost electrical. But look at the colour. So that's stunning. Colour of that. Now I can't use that in a fish, but I can use it for something. Maybe a little candle holder. I've just spotted a couple of things over here, sitting very close to one another. I can see that one is a knife. Oh, that's rather special, isn't it? got like a, a glass or a resin, but probably glass I should think, or some kind of plastic handle there. Very pretty, but I've also seen this. Now what is this? It might be nothing. Oh, it's a, a cuff, a cuff link, isn't it? Very pretty. nice. Funny how finds sort of group themselves together, isn't it? Now, walking slowly along the tide line, I've just seen a little pendant down here. It could be a religious pendant. Yeah, with the Virgin Mary on it. Yes, I believe it is. And it probably had enamel on it before. Oh, that is so beautiful. That is absolutely lovely. All these reminders of people from the past, all these fragments, they were all in somebody's house once. Lots of different people's houses. That's why I love doing this so much because it just gets your imagination going, doesn't it? I wonder who put that on for a very special night out years and years ago. Now there's another little treasure just down here. Can you see it there? Can you see what I'm looking at? I shall show you. Just here, look. It's a little crown. Maybe it's a pin. Isn't that gorgeous? I wonder what that was. Whether it was a pin or a little loop there. Maybe a little button, actually. Oh, I'm looking at that loop there. I'm trying to think what it, what it would have been used for. What do you think? 
I've just spotted something down here. And I'm going to see if you can guess what it is before I tell you. It's pretty much in the middle of the screen right now. So it's here and it looks like a little thimble. And indeed, that is what it is. I've just spotted a beautiful bottle stopper. I'm gonna see if my old mud loving friend can see it too. Roughly where are we thinking? Okay, so it's around this area. Okay, is it there? Yes, it is. Well done. You're such a professional. Thank you. <laughs> He's good, isn't he, everyone? He's so good. Let's have a look. That's nice. It's like the River Thames. Oh, that's not a bird. Oh, that's gorgeous. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's a flower. That's see? A flower. <laughs> in the right light, you can see it. But you know what this means, yeah. everyone? It's the obligatory bottle stopper in the sun shot. Where Ooh. is the sun? We've got a nice bit of sun today as well. Oh, lovely. Look at that. Very special. So I can see a couple of coins down here. There's one there. And there's one here as well. I'll clean them up later so we can see what they are. There's another coin here. That could be a decentime, possibly. I have just spotted the most splendiferous piece of red pinky glass. Look at this. Now I am going to be able to incorporate that into a fish somehow. So watch this space. Beautiful. Okay, well I found part of the body of my fish, as you saw a moment ago. Look at this. Now this is the head. That is going to make the perfect head of my red fish. That's the face. Excellent. Oh, I can't wait to uh, create this fish. Do you know what? I've just seen another glorious bottle stopper over here. A real beauty. Look at this. Isn't that special? I just turned a rock over and came face to face with this. And on turning it over, see what that is. It's a beautiful jeweled brooch. Just missing a couple of stones. Heard a little whoop of joy from over here. Wow. What have you found, mud lover? Well, I've got. Well, I thought it was just a. It looks like a spoon. Well, it is a spoon. Uh, head, I suppose. And because uh, it wasn't the usual coppery colour, I thought it might be silver. So I've just done the silver test, which involves just getting a little bit of saliva on the spoon and then giving it a rub and you can smell it and it smells of like a sulfury kind of eggy smell which means we have a silver spoon head fantastic yeah so can i might I smell uh, it oh yeah i see what you mean yeah it's not a bad breath don't worry <laughs> <laughs> so you got some silver yeah nice chunky silver head instead of a spoon and have you found some other good bits today i have found many good bits yeah i've uh i've found 
I found, uh, well, should I tell you what I found? I found rings, coins, brooches, bling, uh, a lovely tile, which you may have seen already. Uh, yeah, loads of bits and bobs. But yeah, it's been a really fantastic day. Um, and here is our friend, Odd, oh, he's finally turned up. Odd. Hey. Finally, Odd has arrived. There was an awful traffic jam, and unfortunately the tide has come up, but here he is. And he has actually made a good find. But first of all, Odd, Thank you so much for inviting us here to this special place. And you have a YouTube channel too, don't you? Yeah, I do. Now, can you just tell us what it's called and where we can see more of your finds and videos? Well, I have 600 videos already, so wow. I should wow. be a little bit famous by now. <laughs> <laughs> Try uh, Mudbacher on YouTube, you find me. And uh, I believe in no-nonsense mud liking. I take you with me on the foreshore and what I find is what I show and that's all. And I'm so, so glad to uh, meet so many people all over the globe with the same interest as I have. So. Well, we're really excited to be here and we're going to spend the day with you tomorrow. So hopefully there'll be no traffic problems <laughs> but you've only been here five minutes and you found something quite special yeah sure what is it it's terracotta mold of an old figurine wow. for pipe clay yeah most likely uh, these go back of course to Roman times but I think this one will be from around 1900 well, that's very, very but special. molds are uh, extreme rare and uh, this is for me a uh, very special find. Super. And I find bits of figurines all the time, so uh, I clean it. And maybe one day I'll have a part of the figurine that's made with this mold. Well, super. And you've had some great finds too, haven't you? Yeah, it's been a great day, yeah. Bits of tile, really nice Delft-inspired uh, tile, which was made locally. Um, coins. Jewelry, a ring. Um, yeah, it's been fantastic. Really cool place to come, and lots of unusual things as well. Yeah, military badge. Yep, little with military. this uh, S. With the S on, uh, yep, S for Sci. <laughs> oh, fantastic. So don't forget to go and see Sci Finds video. It's mm. bound to be an excellent one. Fabulous. Well, I think we're going to go and have some refreshments now. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> doing there got carried away with the music how are you all i hope that you're all well wherever you are in the world that you're in good spirits and that your week or your weekend is going well thank you so much for watching this video i hope that you enjoyed it as much as i enjoyed it and a thank you again goes out to ard for inviting simon and i to this wonderful beach full of eclectic treasures to find at literally every step so I'm going to just do a little bit of a, a deep dive into one find in particular, probably my favourite one of that outing, and it is this pendant here, which is a little pendant with the, the Virgin Mary on the front, and on the back it says Centenaire des Apparitions Lourdes, 1858-1958. So that gives me a good opportunity to show off my French, and I'm sure many of you speak French out there. But of course, it means centenary of the Lourdes apparitions, which happened in February of 1858. So lots and lots of these would have been manufactured in 1958 to, to celebrate those 100 years. So the apparition was made to a young girl called Bernadette Soubirou who was just 14 years old and who lived in Lourdes in the Pyrenees. 
She was quite a sickly child, apparently. She'd caught cholera when she was very, very young, and she suffered very badly with asthma. And she was on her own by some rocks and then saw this shining light. Nobody else could see it, by the way. Her, her siblings were across the other side of the river and they couldn't see it. Um, but she saw this shining light that appeared to be a lady. And she saw this apparition about 18 times and it transpired that it was the Virgin Mary who was asking that a chapel be created there where Bernadette saw her. Now, of course, her family and most of the villagers doubted her and thought she was probably quite, um, quite out of her mind. But finally, it was all confirmed and she was in fact made a saint by the Pope in 1933. Her body was actually exhumed three times and on the third time it was placed in a glass coffin and is now to this day, as far as I know, on display in a convent where she died relatively young at the age of 35. So that is the story of this and of course now, um, I'm, I'm sure you've probably all heard of Lourdes, I mean it's a a very very popular pilgrimage destination and lots and lots of pilgrims tourists travel there every year to go and see the chapels that were built in that area and also to get the opportunity to put their feet or touch the the water from the spring because there was also a spring there which is said to be a healing spring and in actual fact there's been a lot of films created about those apparitions and I did happen to find a trailer for one which I'm going to show you now. Bernadette of Lourdes starring Danielle Auzouré in a brilliant portrayal of Bernadette who drew fear and hysteria from those who did not believe. Bernadette who tested the loyalties of those who could not understand. The girl who was to become for succeeding generations a symbol of faith and hope for a troubled world. Bernadette, filmed entirely in Lourdes, is the first true motion picture presentation of a story that will live in your heart forever. I wonder if somebody who went to visit is the person that bought this and wore it. And then somehow, years and years later, it ended up on the beach for me to find. It's not the first object that I have found related to the Virgin Mary. I mean, in all rivers, I'm not sure if this one was tossed in purposefully, but in a lot of rivers, of course, many, many religions throw in various statuettes and icons and religious deities. And it's not just the Hindu faith that does that, but it's also Christians. And I have found along the Thames three Virgin Marys. I shall just quickly show them to you. I've got this one here. And this one was in the water for so long that poor baby Jesus has been completely eroded away. So that's my first one that I found that several years ago. And I have these two here, which were obviously at some point um, bottles or containers. So they could have held water that came from Lourdes, in particular this one. And there's something, yeah, quite special about them. Right, so moving on, I do have a couple of mystery finds, which I thought you might be able to help me with. The first one is this one here. I've polished it up a bit. And Simon did in fact suggest that it could be a little type of ashtray type thing that you strike a match on just here it's got like a rough edge um, and was perhaps fixed to the back of a chair in fact looking at it now it does remind me of way back when I used to go to the cinema as a young child and do you remember there used to be ashtrays on the back of the chair in front of you and so it could be that look there's like a little a little screw thing here which could have been you know used to fix into the back of the chair and then this little bit here so it could be a tiny little ashtray what do you think thoughts you know i wanted to get hold of some non-safety matches to try striking it on there to see if it would light but i didn't realize that you can't actually buy 
non-safety matches anymore. Certainly not very easily anyway. You can't get them in the shops. So that's that. The other little object here, which I think could be silver, is this. Now, could this, well, keeping on the theme of cigarettes, could this be the end of a cigarette holder, do you think? Although, having said that, it doesn't look as if there's anywhere that you could actually sort of suck on, if you see what I mean. There doesn't seem to be a hole. And that bit here seems to have some wood in it. So, maybe it's the end of some kind of cane. Do you have any thoughts on what that could be? Apart from that, there are lots of coins, little buttons badges there is this little crown here which i think is the belgian crown and so it could have military connections of course that could have been on somebody's shoulder or maybe a military button i polished up this little brooch that i found at the end and there was a stone missing well, there were two stones missing, actually, one in the middle and one from around the edge. So I found a little piece of sea glass and popped it in, both the missing stones, and it looks rather nice now, I think. Gave it a little squirt of varnish. And when you hold it up to the light, it's actually really, really rather pretty. So I just need to put a little pin on it now and I'll be able to wear it. So that's come right back to life. Now, talking of sea glass, I was really excited to see the selection of sea glass on that beach. As many of you know, I do love to make mostly fish out of broken pieces of glass. I've been doing that for several years, but I haven't actually made any for ages, well over a year. So this really inspired me to get my materials out again and make a fish. So I have actually made a fish out of some of that red glass. So I will show you the process of it here. fish transformed from that old broken glass found on the beach. So I'm actually very, very pleased with this fish. Absolutely beautiful. I think I will call her Ruby. Now I'm not actually going to sell this fish, at least not at the moment, but I am going to start making some more very soon. So I will let you know when I have some, because I know lots of people have been contacting me, asking me when I'm going to make more glass fish. So this has now kind of made me want to make more. So I will let you know when I have made some. This, the crow. Now, a few weeks ago, I said I was going to do a giveaway of a crow necklace, a silver crow necklace. It's one of my favorite necklaces made by my friend Wendy of Clark Jewelry on Folksy. And so lots of people entered into the draw to win this. And so I'm going to do the draw right now. Right, so here we are on a pick a winner site. We are going to find out who has won this crow, well, not this one, but um, an identical crow necklace made by Wendy. Let's look and see. So I'm gonna paste the YouTube link there. Fetch, choose a filter. It's gonna be a keyword. And the keyword I asked for was Tideline Art. So let's put that in, Tideline. Oh, there we are, that's automatically filled. Right, okay, continue. Are you watching? Eyes down for a full house. 
Wow, lots of comments, lots of comments. Who's going to win? So exciting, so exciting. Okay, this is the moment of truth. This is the moment of truth. Who's gonna win? One, two, three. Oh, look, here we go. Michelle, thank you. I find your adventures so calming and entertaining that I watch it just before going to bed. Excellent, I'm so glad that you find them relaxing and that you fall asleep to them. That is a great compliment. So congratulations, Michelle, on winning the crow necklace. And I do apologize if I'm not pronouncing your name right. That is a definite possibility. And so I apologize if that's the case. Please contact me on my contact form via my website, tidelineart.com. And I will get that sent to you as soon as possible. Commiserations to everybody else who did not win, but don't worry, there will be more opportunities in the not too distant future. But in the meantime, why not check out Wendy's folksy site where you can see her jewellery that she makes, often inspired by the Thames and by mudlarking finds. You might find something that you just can't resist purchasing. I've got lots of Wendy's jewellery and I love it to bits. The last thing I wanted to say before ending this video is that this week in the UK, or maybe elsewhere, I'm not quite sure, but certainly in the UK, it's been Mental Health Awareness Week, particularly focusing on anxiety, which is something that, of course, we can all experience from time to time, but sometimes it can get a bit out of control. Now, at various times in my life, I have suffered from... Uh, I would say acute anxiety, so I can totally empathise with anybody else that goes through that. It is so unpleasant and really hard to deal with. So I just wanted to say, please know that if you suffer from anxiety, you're not alone and please don't suffer alone. Please reach out to a friend or a professional. And I'm actually going to put a link in the description of this video which is a list of suggestions of things we can do to alleviate um, anxiety. If you can't access that link because you watch these videos on a TV and you'd like to get them, then please do, again, contact me via my website and I will send you the link. It's always helpful to have a list of things sometimes that we can do to make our anxiety less. Something that helps me a lot is getting outside, doing some exercise and mudlarking and searching for history, beachcombing is definitely something which has helped my anxiety, but please don't suffer alone. So on that note now, I would just like to really thank you all for watching this video and my previous videos for all your support, your comments, your suggestions, your IDs. I really appreciate them. And thank you too to everybody who has donated to my Ko-fi site or via Super Thanks. I really, really appreciate all your donations. They do not go unnoticed. A big thank you. And lastly, I want to say thank you, Ard, for our fantastic time again. It was absolutely brilliant. Please do go and check out Ard's YouTube channel, which is Mud Bagger. And we've got several more videos coming from our trip over there and you're going to find out lots more interesting stuff about some of the incredible treasures that Simon and I and Ard found. And thanks, of course, to my mud buddy Simon for being such great company on our trip abroad to our secret location. Okay, everyone, that's enough from me. I've been going on quite enough now. So I'm gonna leave you, love you and leave you, wish you a fantastic week ahead, and I'm very much looking forward to seeing you again very soon. Lots of love.